Humans normally live in sodium equilibrium. The kidney excretes exactly as much sodium as the body absorbs. You can think of the kidneys as perfectly accurate atomic balancing machine. Sodium in equals sodium out. And if not, you get pathologic conditions. For example, if sodium intake exceeds sodium excretion, the patient will develop edema. This is what happens regardless if the edema is due to cirrhosis or heart failure or nephrotic syndrome. In all those situations, sodium intake is exceeding sodium excretion. If sodium excretion exceeds sodium intake, the patient becomes volume depleted. This is what happens in diarrhea, vomiting, and with diuretics. In fact, that's the whole point of diuretics. Diuretics poison normal kidney function such that renal sodium excretion exceeds sodium intake. Diuretics lower total body sodium, but they don't do that forever. Eventually, patients reach a new steady state where once again, sodium intake equals sodium excretion. It just exists at a lower level of total body sodium than they did without the diuretics. Once they stop the diuretics, their sodium balance returns to normal. Let's take a little closer look at renal sodium handling. Normal GFR is 100 milliliters per minute, normal sodium concentration is 140, and you have 1,440 minutes in a day. Multiply those together and you get 20,160 millimoles of sodium that are filtered every day. How much sodium is excreted? Well, it's equivalent to the dietary intake. Call it roughly 100 millimoles per day, though often quite a bit more. Take that 20,000, subtract that 100, and that leaves you 20,060 millimoles of sodium that need to be reabsorbed. 99.5% of the sodium filtered is reabsorbed by the nephron. That is the job of the nephron. It needs to reabsorb all that sodium so you can remain in sodium balance. Every segment of the nephron is involved in sodium reabsorption. The proximal tubule, the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the cortical collecting duct. And each one of these is targeted by a unique class of diuretics. Acetazolamide, loop diuretic, thiazides, and potassium sparing diuretics. We're going to go over each one of these types in the next chapters. So I hope you liked this video absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.